Retrieval of random generation RAG, has been seen as an effective approach to reduce hallucination in large language models. However, in our previous videos, we saw something weird like this. This reasoning does not really make sense to me at all. Even if we provide our KG data, it somehow still doesn't incorporate correctly. Even providing the correct context and the ground truth to LLMs, they somehow still didn't want to follow. And we got this interesting comment from our viewer. What if these LLMs think they already know the answer to the question because they think their internal knowledge is more correct than the external knowledge from our RAC system? And this research, how faithful our RAC systems just came timely. This research looks at how language models balance external information with their internal knowledge. It compares GPT-4, GPT-3.5, and Mistral 7b. GPT-4 is found to be the most reliable model when using external information, with GPT-3.5 at second and Mistral 7b at the third place. Regardless of their difference, all models tend to stick to their own knowledge if they're confident that the external knowledge is less correct. And this study concludes that while RAC can still enhance accuracy, its effectiveness depends on the model's confidence and the prompting technique. It's insightful to know LM's tendency to fall back on their internal patterns. I was also trying to find out in this study if pairing LLMs with different embedding models would make any difference. As you previously found out, the different combinations of language models and embedding models can lead to quite different results, such as... Who are the other founders Elon co-founded SpaceX with? PayPal. That's weird. The study doesn't seem to include such information, but it highlighted the use of different prompting techniques can influence how LLMs follow external knowledge. As LangChain and LamaIndex were used in this particular study, I wonder if DSPy, which is a framework for auto-tune prompts, can effectively make the different pairings of LLMs and embedding models better follow external knowledge in the RAC system. Just to recap, BSPy is a modular framework to improve LLM pipelines. It has an optimizer that applies bootstrapping to create and refine examples. Bootstrapping is a technique that repeatedly samples and tests data to find the best performance patterns. This process automatically creates self-improving prompts based on specific metrics. Before we go into the details of setting metrics for the optimizer in the pipeline, remember seeing the strange answer of PayPal being a co-founder of SpaceX previously? We later found out that the entity linker feature from the Fast Natural Language API can exactly prevent this from happening. Entity linking is a process to validate information by mapping and identifying words in your text to entities in the knowledge graph. And in this video, we're using the DiffBoth knowledge graph because it has the largest network of verified information sources on planet Earth. So natural language API can be used to extract entities and relationships, but it also can verify how valid the answer is by linking facts back to the DiffBoth knowledge graph. PayPal is being categorized as these entity types, also with a confidence score. And here you see the clickable link, which actually further lead to the page about PayPal and all the other relevant information here, which means this information is valid. But let's type Pipe Piper. Hi Piper is a made up company name from the sitcom Silicon Valley. While the NL API can correctly identify this is probably an organization name, there's no link here, which means it can't be mapped back to the default knowledge graph because it's not a valid company. Well, they do have a valid LinkedIn page with all these fake profiles. Richard Hendricks, Dinesh, Jared, another Dinesh, and Ed Chambers. Jared done. Go for Chambers. <laughs> Adding an entity linker in LLM based systems will look like this. This validation step not only checks the correct answer types, but also can help filter made up information when LLMs are hallucinating. So now we kind of see what entity linker can do for us. We updated our DSPO RAC pipeline with this answer type validity check to see if it can improve the output from the question that we saw last time. So let's actually look at the obvious difference between our basic RAC and the one with entity linker. When we update with the step to check entity type, this is closer to the right answer. And when we look at the reasoning part, language model was guided to find specifically the information regarding person. As you can see here, Elon Musk is a person. Jim Control is also a person. The correct answer should be Elon is a sole founder of SpaceX. But at least this is closer to the right answer compared to the previous one with PayPal. 
which to some degree proves that this is a step that we should consider integrating in our LLM pipeline as a step to validate. So what we are going to do is to have both entity type checks and guiding language models to stick strictly with the external data from our knowledge graph. So here's a brief recap of how we previously designed our custom DS PyRag pipeline integrating with knowledge graph data. First, it refines the original question with our knowledge graph because knowledge graphs can provide more comprehensive context as they organize data points with connections. And then the language model will further retrieve relevant information from our vector database based on this refined query. And finally, it would enhance the answer by combining information from the vector database and metadata from our knowledge graph. As we mentioned previously, we need metrics for the DSPy optimizer. So the two metrics we're using here, first, check the entity type, and the second is to assess how effective the pipeline is following the data from Knowledge Graph. So if the entity type of the answer is matched in our entity linker, or is a yes, no type of answer, which entity type is not required, We'll increase the score by one and then move on to the second metric, which is to assess if the answer aligns or is consistent with the context from our knowledge graph. So now we have our metrics ready and we also have our training data set with just a few examples. Besides question, you probably will feel confused like why page contacts and answer are pretty much the same. So the intention here is the final answer should strictly align with the ground truth provided from our knowledge graph. Because if you still remember in our DSPy rack pipeline with knowledge graphs, there's a step that language model will retrieve and generate answer from our vector database. But the vector base answer should further get validated as being consistent with information from the knowledge graph. That's why you see here there's a custom metric as PG context and the correct answers should always align with this metric here. So the nice thing about knowledge graphs is you actually can see the details of the relationship between these two people with the evidence here. So this is the evidence from the article that showcases the interaction between Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg. And you can easily get this as the property for relationships in your knowledge graph by just calling the default natural language API and it's free. So now you see what we have in our knowledge graph, which serves as the ground truth. When we go into the reasoning part, here the knowledge graph context is being considered. Now we got this enriched query. Let's see what the enhanced output looks like. You can see that more specific passages regarding the martial arts match are being retrieved. It further incorporates how their relationship evolves. This is probably a clear example to illustrate what it means to enhance language models retrieval ability by bringing in knowledge graphs. And I think this is also a good example of how knowledge graphs can be combined with vector-based RAC. So here's what the ground truth looks like in our knowledge graph. There's only one relationship regarding who founded SpaceX, and this tells us that Elon Musk is the sole founder. This relationship is being supported by the evidence here from the text in the Wikipedia page. And that's why we will get an empty list. This is the ground truth that no co-founders of SpaceX will be returned. Here we provided the ground truth, but the optimized program did not seem to successfully make GPT 3.5 stick to the external knowledge. See what it did. And we can also look at the third program that we optimize on. The answer was not even close to being relevant. So here's an example of how the automated prompt pipeline just went a little bit too far. This is our original question and also we provide a ground truth. Our original query somehow just got optimized as who else has co-founded companies with Elon Musk? SpaceX for some reason just got rid of. Even if now we have optimizer in the pipeline, the self-directed prompt pipeline by language models themselves may not be that reliable. Plus, by nature, they're just unpredictable. So to what degree should we rely on their self-directed reasoning ability? 
So now that we saw the performance of the DSPI pipeline can be quite language model or embedding model dependent for the less performing combinations. One is Lama 3 and Esper, and the other one is GP 2.5 plus A.002. Now I'm coming back to manually tweaking prompts to make language models stick more to the external knowledge. As the research health aid for our RAC systems also pointed out that the forcefulness of prompt templates can can influence the degree of how the language models are following the external knowledge. This is our first prompt template where the language model was not specifically instructed to strictly follow the ground truth from knowledge graph. And hallucination is obvious here. While this could be some existing patterns in the language model, if we go on to the next template where we specifically instruct LMs to strictly follow the ground truth in knowledge graph, especially if there's conflicts between their internal patterns and external knowledge, as you can see here and see what we got. This perfectly aligns with our KG data. In this specific use case, if we want language models to stick strictly to external knowledge, manually customizing prompts may still be needed. You can literally see the difference between this answer and the previous one. In my personal opinion, I think DS Pipe is an elite framework. At least for me, throughout the process, the learning curve was quite steep for me. So if you're having a great time with it and reaching better results, congratulations. You are probably being verified as one of the top few percent elite programmers by this elite framework. So good for you. But so far, we're taking a break from this because we are moving on to graph racks. So I'll see you in the next one.